Hello and welcome to Watercolour School. My name is Vicky and this is week three. Already in the first week, we've been over quite a few of the different techniques and I'm using supplies from Kmart and the dollar store. If you haven't seen the first two lessons, I suggest you go back and find those and start at lesson one and work forward because it explains all of these techniques that we've been doing here. This week I'm going to do more crayon resist techniques, which is what I used here in this landscape and what I used to make my moon. I also did some cling wrap or saran wrap over watercolour. And these are some examples using two colours instead of one. And I think they turned out really well. This is another version of the hills that we painted last week. And instead of putting mountains in the back, you can just leave some of your paper blank and that can read as snow on the mountaintops, particularly if you put a dark sky and a few little snowflakes in it and change your colour scheme from blues to greens. One of the other techniques that I talked about was colour lifting to create these clouds in the sky by dabbing off the wet paint with a tissue. And this is an example of how I've used this in one of my paintings to create this sky here, just using that tissue technique. Another technique we learned last week was the salt technique, where you add salt to very wet paint and it can create these amazing effects. In this painting, I used rock salt over very wet paint and it drew out most of the pigment, leaving these lovely crystal shapes. This week, we're going to be working with Crayon Resist. Using a similar colour scheme to these cards I created here, we're going to do an abstract flower painting using the same colours and a Crayola white crayon. If you don't have a Crayola white crayon, you can use a birthday candle, a white birthday candle, or a white household candle. Now I'm doing a little bit of arm waxing here. <laughs> I'm using my arm to take some of the tack off the masking tape. I have a printer paper sheet that I'm using, and I'm going to use my pencil to just lightly sketch a flower shape. And I'm going over the lines twice and just creating a bit of a stem and a couple of leaves. Now I'm going to bring in my Crayola white marker and I'm going to trace over it to use muscle memory to be able to draw this blind. So I'm using the same movements. Even though it's very hard for me to see while I'm doing this, it's almost invisible painting. I like this technique or invisible drawing because it keeps you loose and you can't really overthink it or make it a very stiff drawing. It has a lot of movement and a lot of looseness to it. I'm going to use a very pale blue paint just to make it easier to see where I've sketched using that Crayola white crayon. And you can see the picture of the flower is starting to show through just very faintly. And that's all I need. I just need a faint guide. And I'm using a very pale blue in the background so that I have somewhere to start with laying down those beautiful vibrant colours. The yellows, the oranges and the bright green. So I'm very carefully using the flat brush to create a nice wash in the background. You could use a bigger brush if you had one. And I want that completely dry before I start the next phase. So I want to create these lovely colours that I created on my card. So I'm taking some beautiful intense yellows, uh, a beautiful orange colour and a lovely green colour. I'm picking three colours that I really like from this set from Micador. And you can see it's thick. It's not moving all over the plate. When I tip the plate, it doesn't move. So this is quite thick paint and I'm putting it on very fast and basically just dabbing it around the painting. 
Now I'm going to bring in the orange color and do the same thing. Now it can touch a little bit of the yellow, that's fine, but I don't want it to mix in with the yellow. This is designed to keep your painting very abstract and loose. And keep wetting it with your spritzing bottle of water there. And this means it'll start blending together. And it'll start creating a lovely background for your floral piece. Here's the nice green I'm going to use. I'm using that straight out of the palette there and just dabbing it around, not mixing it with the other colors, just filling in the white spaces and just doing it quite sketchily, not overdoing it or overworking it. And that looks really interesting. And when you spritz it with the water, it blends the colors just enough so that it looks like it's an intentional background, which it is. Now you want to dry that off with your hair dryer. And now I'm bringing in a Q-tip or an earbud or a cotton tip, whatever you may um, know it as. And I'm dipping it in some water, just clean water. And I'm dabbing off the excess on a paper towel. And this is lifting the color. Now you want to be careful with this because being Kmart watercolor paper, it's not very thick and it's not very sturdy. You don't want to rub at this because it will go through the paper, you'll end up with a hole. You just want to treat it gently and just dab at it. And you can see me cleaning off the Q-tip in water in between times and giving it a dab. And at some point it's going to get so dirty you'll want to turn it over and use the clean end. So here's another color lifting technique and it's actually helping the Crayola marker show through. And it gives an effect to this painting that is really hard to identify. So someone will look at this and think, how did they do that? When I'm satisfied that I can see enough of that flower shape, I'm going to stop so that I don't damage the paper. And I'm going to dry it off with the hairdryer. Now that it's dry, I'm going to use a technique called glazing and I'm going to get the same colors again, but a stronger concentration of color. I'm not really using any water other than to clean off my brush. The same orange, the same yellow and the same green, mixing up a nice thick consistency on my china plate. And here's the green. I like using a china plate because the, the paint doesn't bead up like it does on a plastic palette. But just be aware if you have taken a china plate from the kitchen, keep it with your art supplies because you don't want anything toxic in your food. And some paints can be toxic. So now what I'm doing is creating a glaze over the top. So I'm creating a darker version of the green inside that leaf shape. And I'm leaving the area that I pulled out white. So this is going to give really interesting visual effects to this little painting. And it's going to be kind of difficult to see how it was done. So it's a bit of a mystery painting to anyone who's viewing it, but it's a lot of fun to make. Now I'm just going around the outside of that stem and the outside of the leaf. And this is intensifying the flower so that it's starting to pop out of the background. Another way you can do a sort of a resist on paintings is to use masking fluid, but that's quite an expensive item to invest in. It's good, but it does cost quite a bit of money. And I find that using a crayon in white or a white birthday candle or household candle even, works just as well. So now I'm glazing over the petals and bringing them out so that they'll pop forward. And I'm not being too precise with this. I'm enjoying the process and just having a lovely painting session. I'm not thinking too hard about what I need to do. I'm just enjoying the play. 
Now I'm spreading some of the yellow around as glaze to have the painting start to pop out even more from the background. You can see as each petal is layered on, it starts to pop out even more from the background. But I'm not covering up any of the white areas. I like the fact that it has that lovely white line around it created by the Crayola white crayon. Dry off your work completely. If you want to, you can add even another glaze over the top like I'm doing here, but this part isn't essential. When you feel that the flower is standing out enough from the background, you can stop there. Be careful not to cover up the white areas because they are part of the charm of this piece. And this method of painting using wax resist ensures that you won't overwork your painting. It will stay fresh and loose. Now I'm intensifying the green in the stems and the leaves, adding a bit of detail like veins. But just working fast, not being too particular or precise. This is all play. Adding some dashes on the stem. Because why not? <laughs> just little fun touches like that. Now, one of the things I really like to do with my paintings is to have all the colours mixing together to create a fourth colour. In this case, I'm making a kind of a brown. It's a nice warm brown. I'll add a bit more green to bring in a bit more of the green shade. And I'm just going to dot in the middle of the flower. Just with the very tip of my round brush. Tap, 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 working fast, not being too precise. And then I like to spread that colour around the painting so it's not just in one place. So I'll add a little bit to the leaves. And we are getting close to done. So I'm going to dry that off now. And take the tape off. You can see how well these colours work together and how balanced this colour scheme is. And I'm going to leave the tape in the centre there because this is the spine of the book that we created. And I'm just going to wipe the colour off that with some water. So there's the painting, first painting finished. And it does bear a resemblance to the cards that I made earlier in the week. Here is another card I made using a lot of glazing and there is a full tutorial for this on my channel of poppies. And that's using a lot of glazing and wet in wet techniques and then allowing things to dry and painting over the top. Now we're going to get started on the next exercise. This is going to be a moonlit forest. And I'm going to do a little bit of different painting in this. I'm going to create a circle in the background, which is like the moonlight shining through. So I'll start by taping up the right hand page, burnishing the center so that the water doesn't come through. And I'm going to create a circle just by using my water. And that circle I'm going to keep completely clear of the background paint that I'm using. So I'm doing a background wash again, just like I did in the first one. It will be a pale blue wash, but I'm keeping that circle free of water and of any of the background color. And this is going to give the effect of the moonlight shining through the forest. I'm using that flat brush to wash it in. If you had a larger one, you could use a larger one too. It would not take quite as long. 
So when that's all nice and wet, I'm bringing in the pale blue that I had in the background of the flower and making it extremely wet so that it's just a very pale background. The idea with this one is to work from paler colours to darker colours, but rather than glazing as I did with the flower, this time I'm going to use more concentrated pigment each time. Dry your painting off with a hairdryer and put four puddles of paint onto your plate or your palette in that lovely dark greenish grey colour. Or if you didn't have this colour, you could use a deep navy colour like I did in the example. And each of these puddles is going to be of a different consistency and thickness. Paint the back layer of your painting with the watery mixture. So adding a lot of water to this mixture. And I'm starting at the bottom, working my way up. And the secret to painting trees is to have no straight lines anywhere. So keep your lines wobbly. And I find it's easier to paint from the bottom up and to release the pressure on my brush as I get closer to the top, which means I'll have a finer stem or twig at the top because I'm barely touching the brush to the paper. So just using a lot of the letter Y and wavy lines creates tree shapes. So that's probably enough for that back layer, except for a couple that I might bring in right on the very side here. So this is a very watery mix, but it is less watery than the background wash. You can add some smaller branches and twigs. And this is already looking like an interesting painting because I've left that white circle of blank paper in the centre, which is where the moonlight is shining through. So this layer is going to be dried off. Now we're going to the medium layer, which is this colour that I've put in here, which is going to be slightly thicker, but I want to allow the thickest layer to be right on top. So you can see how that is quite runny with that amount of water that I've used there. This one I've mixed up with less water, but it's still not going to be as intense a colour as the top layer. Adding a bit more pigment there. You can see it's not moving on the plate, whereas the first layer is running down the side of the plate. You can see how runny that first layer was. So I'm just getting a nice consistency there. Nice and creamy. Starting at the bottom, working my way up. And this time I think I'll do fewer trees, but they're going to be a thicker trunk because they're closer to the foreground. So I'm going to give them a thicker trunk coming down and thicker limbs and not quite as many as in the background. And you can see I'm not using straight lines, I'm using wavy lines and that helps your trees look more organic. Now starting to add some of the extra branches on the tree. And again, they're just Y shapes.
and I'm releasing the pressure as I get to the top of the page so that the branch becomes thinner. So this is going to be the second stand of trees and I think there'll be another layer on the top. After this will be quite a dark layer. So this tree is just coming in from the side. You can't see the whole trunk of this tree. So it's just coming in on an angle, but it is still that darker consistency of paint. And now I'm doing a third tree coming in from the left. Remembering to release the pressure as I come to the end of each branch. and dry off that layer so that we can continue on with the final layer, which is a really thick layer of that color. And you can see that other one's so runny, I might actually mop that up so it doesn't run into my thick layer. That was the very first tree branches that we did. So now this is the third layer, excluding the background. With the background, it's actually four layers. And it's creating a misty forest scene with the moonlight shining through the branches. So I want this final coat quite thick. And rather than adding water to my brush, I'm just scrubbing off the pigment on this edge of the plate. So now these are going to be the main focal point. So these trees are going to be much thicker and much darker. They're going to have thicker trunks in particular. And this will give the appearance that these trees are in the foreground, very similar to the exercise we did with the mountains last week. And you'll need to keep picking up pigment each time to keep this tree dark enough. So keep your brush well loaded with pigment. You can go over the tree a few times to intensify the color. If you have a steady hand. And anywhere where the branches meet the trunk, those branches need to be a little bit thicker. I'm adding in some detail because you will see more detail in these branches than the trees at the very back. And of course, all of these trees are deciduous. None of them have any leaves. So that makes the painting much more simplified. Now I feel as though this tree needs to be slightly thicker. So I'm going to thicken up some areas of the trunk, particularly up through the center of the tree there.
and still keep the details quite fine strokes. So now I'm adding a thicker area to the center of that trunk just to give it a little more weight and a little more prominence so it will stand out from the trees behind it. And I'm just going over a final time to intensify that color even more. So now that is dry and I'm going to remove the tape so you can see the final result. And it's not showing up that well on camera, but in real life, I can see that white circle quite plainly through the back of the trees, which is suggesting the moonlight shining through. Next week in lesson four, we will be looking at line and wash techniques and some more masking techniques using masking tape to create designs. See you there. Bye for now.